In today's video, I'll be showing you how to consolidate multiple tables in Excel using Power Query's append function. So as you can see, I have multiple tables for uh, sales data for each month of the year. And I want to combine these 12 tables into one big table that looks something like this. And as you can see, I've included a pivot uh, table and a pivot chart as well to further analyze my data. So I'm going to be showing you how to combine these tables together in Power Query. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just make sure that my tables are named. So I need to make sure that each table is not called table one, two, three. It's actually given a unique name. That just makes things easier when we're loading the data into Power Query. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a fresh Excel file and I'll actually close this existing Excel file for now. So I've opened a brand new Excel file and I'm just going to quickly save it. I'll call it uh, sales. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my data tab, get data and from file from Excel workbook. And I'm going to select the Excel workbook, which contains the monthly sales data. All right. So now I'm importing the Excel tables into this file over here into uh, Excel's Power Query. And the reason I opened a brand new Excel uh, workbook is because in this manner, we can actually uh, upload all tables at once rather than doing them one by one. So if we were to stay in the same uh, Excel file, we would have to upload the tables one by one into Power Query. This just makes things easier. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select, click on select multiple items. And in my case, I only want um, the sales tables for all months of the year apart from September. I don't want September's data from my example here. So I'm just gonna click April and then shift and click up to October. And so as you can see now I have all 11 tables uh, here. And now I'm gonna go into transform data and this will open up Power Query's editor once it processes these tables as well. And this is why we named the tables is so that they're actually called their corresponding names. If they were called table one, two, three, over here we would see table one, two, three, and it would be hard to tell which month it corresponds to, right? So as you can see, we have 11 queries, so 11 months, and I decided to skip September's table because I don't want that. Um, the next thing we'll do is we can append these tables together. Uh, however, there is an important step that we're missing. These table headers, column headers, slightly differ between the tables. So as you can see in this table, it's called transaction date, revenue and item. And in this table, it's called date, sales amount and products. So different column names. So now when you're appending in Power Query, there is gonna be some errors. It's gonna have some confusion if the column headers are different. And so I've actually made a video on how to deal with the situation. And I'll link the video down in the description as well but anyhow for now i'm just going to manually go ahead because there's only 11 tables i'll quickly fix up the formatting so that the column names are consistent among all 11 of these tables all right so now i've fixed the column header names so that they're co consistent amongst all 11 tables and now we're ready to merge these tables together so when you merge queries you're essentially adding columns together from different sources Whereas when you append, you're actually adding rows together. So in our case, we have three consistent columns, transaction date, revenue, and item. And these columns are consistent amongst all 11 tables. In this case, we don't need to add any new columns. We only need to add new rows. So we can pick any table from this and we can add other rows from other tables for the corresponding columns to these. So in our case, we want to append. So I'm going to choose any table. I'm going to choose, for example, April because it's on top. And now I want to append the data that's in each of these columns for the remaining 10 tables into this April table. So with April table selected, I'll go into append queries and I'll just go into append queries. I don't want to append it as new, although you could do that. Um, I'm just going to go to append queries and after it's done loading um, it'll just give me an option here two tables three or more tables so we have 11 tables right so three or more tables 
Our current table selected is April. So I'm just going to select the remaining tables and I'll click on add and then I'll click on OK. And so now we have a master table with all of our sales data consolidated together. Now I'm going to sort the transaction date by ascending just so we can see from January all the way to December. Again, we, we skipped the September table, but we can see throughout the year how we performed in sales. Now, as for my items, there are 10 unique items, but as you can see, because they have multiple transaction dates, uh, they're going to occur multiple times as well. And we're going to address this when we move on to our pivot table as well. A few things I want to change here before I take this into Excel is in the revenue column, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to go into uh, change type and I'll change it to a currency type. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, close and load and this is going to take everything into Excel. All right, so here's my table. This is called April because I appended everything to the April table. So we have 86 total transactions from various months throughout the year. And now we can go ahead and process this table further to determine how we actually did in terms of our sales. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and create a pivot table to really visualize how each product is performing in terms of its sales. So I'll just go into insert and I'll insert a pivot table. And this is going to be a very simple pivot table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put uh, item in rows and revenue in values. And then I'm going to left click revenue or right click it. And I'll just go into value field settings, number format, and I'll change it to accounting format. And now, as you can see, we can see we had a total of 10 items, 10 unique items, and this is how they did in revenue. Now I can further compare this using a pivot uh, chart. So we're going to just add a simple pivot chart right over here. And that's going to further show us how each product is doing in terms of its annual sales. So as you can see, we used Power Query's append function to add and consolidate all these 11 tables into one master table. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks so much for watching.